We certainly have a lot of important news to get to this morning, but first we're going to spend some time talking about this summer's electricity rates. Over the next few months, cranking up the AC is going to cost Texans more this summer if they have to find a new electricity contract, which if you're living paycheck to paycheck, it can really put a strain on your wallet. So joining me now to discuss how to find the best electricity rate for you and your family, we have David Kinchin from Energy Ogres. He is a COO. Good morning. Thank you so Good much morning. for coming to the studio to chat with us. I think the big uh, overview question on everyone's mind right now is why are we seeing these rates going up? Well, one, it's it's summer, and that's mm -hmm. generally where we get a lot of the higher usage. And uh, if we remember remember from last year, we would get some of those weather alerts and all that. So most of the time we have plenty of electricity in the summer or when it's very, very cold, we can get into a constraint where we might not have enough. And so we start seeing that. The reps, the REPs, um, the retail providers, when they're going through and they're hedging for the contract that they're providing, they have to account for that in theirs. Mm -hmm. So August is kind of a scary month for us. Usually, you know, we've all kind of seen warnings. Last August, we saw some a lot of conservation alerts. So when you get into the scarcity where we don't have enough energy, it starts to get very, very expensive as you mm -hmm. try to show up with that power. So what would you tell consumers, customers right now, what can they expect for, for an average electricity pricing mm -hmm. this summer? I know it's difficult to say initially, yeah. but. Well, I like to look at the 12 month contract because mm -hmm. sometimes you'll see a three month or something short and it looks like it's kind of representing part of the year, but if it's not representing the whole year, it's hard to, kind of hard to tell what that full cost is. Mm -hmm. So I try to let people at least look at the 12 month. And right now the 12 month, it's, it's expensive. You know, it is summer. Um, you're looking in this like, you know, 11 cent energy range, which mm -hmm. is the effective rate, the all in rate is closer to, you know, you're well into, you know, 16 and a half, maybe even 17 cents for, you know, kind of a competitive plan. If you look at your bill and you look at that energy rate and you're well below 11 cents and you're in a contract, that's, that probably means you're in, in a good contract right now. Okay. But if you need to switch, you know, you're moving or your contract's coming up, you're, you're kind of you have available rates, what, just what it is, um, you'd, you'd go in and look at kind of what's out there and it's in the, you know, 11, 12 cent energy range right now. Okay. Well, and you know, you step out the door this morning, it is super hot out there. We have another heat advisory. We're all yeah. dealing with this at our house, you know, wanting to crank the AC, mm -hmm. but there's got to be a way to try to conserve a yeah. little bit. What, what would you tell homeowners or folks? So one, you know, real quick, when ERCOT calls for conservation, mm -hmm. that's more like a when you use it, it's not ultimately using less. They're saying like, okay. um, don't use it between five and six or three and six. That's, that's when. For okay. most of us on our bills, when we want to talk about saving money, we want to use ultimately less electricity. And really that kind of comes down <laughs> to like how much pain and suffering do you want to go through? Uh, so everybody okay. goes, your thermostat. Right. I'm not usually willing to do that as much. I mean, mm -hmm. if you feel that you know, if you're pinching your pennies, it's a really effective one. You can turn up your AC and it will run less. And um, it, that's kind of a painful one. Easier ones to do are, you know, they always tell you like unplug your appliances and all that. Some of my favorite ones are a lot of your appliances have a energy savings mode or an eco mode. Uh -huh. A lot of times that might mean like for your dryer, it runs a little bit longer, but it'll use less electricity. Okay. If you have a uh, dishwasher, sometimes it has a dry, like a, you know, a dryer button on it mm -hmm. and it has a heating element in there. And your dishes, when it runs, it'll run hot water. And when it's done, you have to open it. It might air out a little right. bit. The dryer button makes it drier and it makes it more immediate, but it uses a lot more electricity. Okay. And kind of my favorite one is it's a little bit about when you use it. So for example, if you're running your exhaust for your shower or you're running your dryer where it's pulling in a lot of outside air, if you're running that kind of late night or really early morning, mm -hmm. it's going to be pulling in cooler air from outside. So if you're running that and your AC is kind of struggling and it's four or five in the afternoon and then you run your dryer, you're pulling in that 101 right. degree air. But if you did it first thing in the morning, it might be pulling in 78 degree air. So okay. it's just a little bit more efficient. Just kind of making making those choices and tips. I know these are yeah. things that we can all do, things I can do at home as mm -hmm. well. Um, another question that may be on people's mind are the electricity grid conditions mm -hmm. thus far. It's still early. You yeah. know, so we just kicked off summer, so things can change. But how are we shaping up right now? I think it's looking really good. Um, 
I think May and June have been really mild. It's been, I know it's hot outside, but like compared to last June, for example, it was mm -hmm. already getting really hot. It feels like it's been a little bit wetter this year. July hopefully is similar, but August is always that problem month. So right. probably most of the conservation alerts, concerns, notices we see are gonna be more in August. Now, we do have more and more solar on the grid. So we used to have this problem kind of at peak demand time, the hottest part of the day was like four or five o'clock. And uh, we've actually shifted it really, really hard. Where we used to worry about 5 p.m., we're actually starting to worry about like 9 and 10 p.m. And the reason for that is we have a lot of solar on the grid, mm -hmm. which makes it easier to solve for that peak part of the day problem. Because when it's really hot and all the ACs are running, we have tons of solar energy mm -hmm. to offset it. The problem we have, and we'll have this August, is the sun will eventually go down. And we have probably around August, we'll have 20,000 megawatts of solar. And last year, the peak demand was like 85,000 megawatts of solar. So 20,000 out of that is a lot. And when the sun goes down, it's almost all going to go to zero in a couple of hours. And generally, the wind will start blowing harder and come back. But we have this really kind of ugly area around 7, 8, 9 p.m. where the sun's going away. All that generation's gone, but the mm -hmm. wind hadn't come all the way back yet. So on days where wind is weaker, um, it's going to be kind of a challenge. And you'll see, those are days you'll see those kind of alerts. So we, we have that that issue. The rest of the time and the rest of the day, we have plenty of available power. That's really fascinating. Okay. It, it's just, it, as we've added new fuel mixes, like mm -hmm. we added more wind and now we're adding more solar, we're, we're solving some problems and, and then sometimes we have other kind of challenges to solve. To work through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we know this is certainly something on top of everyone's mind as, as we just started summer and it's just only going to ramp up from here. So David, we certainly appreciate you coming in, taking the time to chat with us. Okay. Thank you very much.